but by the same word, the heavens and earth that now exist are stored up for fire, being kept until the day of judgment and destruction. Hey guys, welcome to the video this week. Out here going for a little walk. <clears throat> a little bit cooler today, which is nice. Good for a little hike. And um, yeah, let's do uh, today's Bible passage out here and meditate on God's Word. Anyways, guys, last week we finished chapter 12 in the book of Mark, and this week we're going to start in chapter 13, and we're only going to get through two verses today from chapter 13, but they're two big ones, so we're going to spend some time on it and uh, meditate on this part of the Gospel of Mark. But anyways, guys, we'll get right into it today. I think the only thing I want you to think about I was trying to think of a question we could think of as we read today's passage. And I think the one question I want you to think of is this, is who did Jesus say? Or rather, what did Jesus say about the temple in Jerusalem? What did he say about this temple in Jerusalem? We're gonna see in today's passage that Jesus actually made a prediction mm -hmm about that temple. And we'll read about it here in chapter 13. So guys, we're at chapter 13. We're gonna read two verses today from cha chapter. And here's what it says. And as he came out of the temple, one of his disciples said to him, look, teacher, what wonderful stones and what wonderful buildings. Now let's pause for a minute and think about this because I think it's pretty interesting, right? Because Jesus has just, remember we learned last time and we read about this, that Jesus had just been teaching them that the religious leaders are thieves who love money and power. They are materialistic to the very core. And he then makes note of a poor widow who gave all that she had as an offering. And Jesus said that she gave more than all the wealthy people who gave out of their abundance. Yet, as they're leaving the temple now, what does this disciple comment on? The amazing buildings. I don't think he quite understood what Jesus, um, <laughs> what he was saying and what Jesus came to accomplish, right? And Jesus, but what he does is he's about to put it more directly in this next verse as we read here right now at verse two in chapter 13. And Jesus said to him, do you see these great buildings? There will not be left one stone upon another that will not be thrown down. Now, Jesus here predicts the destruction of the temple. Now this would have surprised this disciple. I imagine, based on his previous statement, right, where he's saying, look how wonderful these buildings are. This would have surprised him, Jesus' answer to this, and future prediction of what would happen to this temple. Why do we see some Christians, though, today, building in this world as if it'll last? God's very clear, it won't last, it won't. This world's perishing, and the only lasting things are the fruit of the Spirit, as God's Word says in Galatians, are love, joy, peace, patience, kindness, goodness, faithfulness, gentleness, and self-control, right? Those are the only things that are gonna last. Just as Jesus says, the temple would be destroyed. And in fact, this temple was destroyed in around 70 AD. That was nearly 30 years after Jesus had said these prophetic words in the Bible, right? That we have recorded for us. The Bible also predicts the total destruction of the heavens and the earth. This whole material universe that has been so corrupted by sin, our sin, right? Our evil deeds, our filthy rags, which some consider good works, have all polluted God's great creation. And in 2 Peter, we read this future promise of God, it says, we read it in 2 Peter chapter 3, verses 5 to 7. For they deliberately overlooked this fact, 
that the heavens existed long ago, and the earth was formed out of water and through water by the word of God, and that by means of these, the world that then existed was deluged with water and perished. But by the same word, the heavens and earth that now exist are stored up for fire, being kept until the day of judgment and destruction of the ungodly. Wow, right? When you read that, we can see here that just as God destroyed the world with water during Noah's day in the flood, we see that one day there's a promise that the entire heavens and earth are going to be destroyed again, not with water, but fire. And instead of water, what's in the core of the earth now, right? That we all learn about in geology. We all learn about in science. What's in the core of the earth? Well, it's lava, right? It's fire, molten rock. And in the heavens, what do we have up there in space? Meteors. That if one of those hit us, Earth would be destroyed by fire. Also, you got atomic energy we know about today. The very atom that makes up everything that we know of in the material universe, all these atoms have the potential to be de destroyed and destroy us by fire. We know about nuclear energy and the splitting of atoms, as we see in our man-made like nuclear weapons. So indeed, the very thing that's stored up for the destruction to come it's already here. It's already, we already know about it. Just as the water, people knew about it in Noah's day. Just as the Bible predicts. And God is warning us. He's showing people. It's very clear in the Bible here. So, why then do you see some Christians building up things here? Why do they think the kingdom that Jesus describes as a spiritual one is one where their man-made buildings and politics will stand. It's a very strong delusion, right, that some people are under, and it's caused by pride. Jesus, God's word, is very clear. Nothing here will survive. All the ungodly, all these things, all the material, that's gone. If we as Christians want to store up anything, it needs to be treasure in heaven. Just as the Bible says, that won't rust. Not straw and hay that will be burned. Let's read in Matthew chapter 6, verse 20, what it says. But store up for yourselves treasure in heaven, where moths and vermin do not destroy, and where thieves do not break in and steal. Right? These treasures are spiritual ones that's talking about here. It's the fruit of the Spirit that grows through walking in the Holy Spirit in obedience to God and denying the flesh, denying your own selfish evil desires. Stay close to Jesus and you're going to grow the fruit of the Spirit through that Holy Spirit, right? Now the straw and the hay are what many Christians, believers even, are storing up. Look at the mega churches. Look at all the wealth and politics and religious systems that are even within the Christian church today, right? It's straw and hay. Let's read again in here in 1 Corinthians chapter 3, verses 12 to 15. It says, from verse 12, it says, Now, if anyone builds on the foundation with gold, silver, precious stones, wood, hay, straw, each one's work will become manifest for the day will disclose it because it will be revealed by fire and the fire will test what sort of work each one has done. If the work that anyone has built on the foundation survives, he will receive a reward. If anyone's work is burned up, he will suffer loss, though he himself will be saved, but only as through fire. Wow, right? These verses telling us a lot. God's telling us a lot here as Christians. It's telling us, we can see here, Paul's teaching the church that to build on the foundation, which we all know is Jesus Christ, we must build with gold, silver, and precious stones, which represents spiritual service. The fruit of the Spirit in us produce these lasting works. But what's this hay and straw and wood? 
they represent inferior, inferior materials, right? Implying shallow activity with no eternal value. These sort of things, it says, will be burned and Christians will suffer loss. We spent their life building with these materials, these trivial sort of things. Now, it's easy to get caught up in doing things for God that are just hay and straw and won't last. We need to focus instead on the fruit of the Spirit, which produce the gold, the silver, the precious stones that come from a life of walking with Jesus, right? Walking in the Holy Spirit. Now, next week, guys, we're going to continue to read from verse 3, where Jesus tells some of his disciples what the signs will be when all these things are about to be accomplished. But I pray that you will think about your walk with Jesus and think about, are you storing up treasures in heaven, things that will last? Are you focused on obeying God and walking in the spirit? That's what produces the gold, guys. Hope you enjoyed today's Bible passage and video. And God willing, I will see you again next week. Hey guys, thanks for watching the video this week. And remember, true knowledge is meant to be shared. Go out and tell a friend, two or three or five, ten friends what you learned about this week. And God willing, I will see you next week.